I'm joined now by one of our regular doctors, Dr Larissa Corder is an obstetrician and gynaecologist working at one of London's busiest hospitals. Larissa, how do you and your colleagues cope when you hear of yet more deaths of NHS workers? It's so horrible to hear these figures and these personal stories because behind each one are also other relatives who are suffering and my heart goes out to all of them as it does with all my colleagues because, you know, these are the realities that we are facing and, you know, much like all these other families, my own relatives are also worried for me. But you know, on the other hand, I think we all realise that the job we have to do and that the job that, that we go in each day to do is just so, so important and that we have to do it. There is no other choice. We're willing. We put ourselves out there and, you know, our hearts are really, really in it. We want to help. We want to make a really big difference. And when we all took our Hippocratic Oath all those many years ago, never in a million years did we think it was going to be put to this ultimate test. And now mm -hmm. it is being. And you're in it for, for better or Worse. So, you know, in terms of the protective equipment, we are seeing it filter down. Um, yes, there are still certain pieces that we have to recycle, but it is the situation is a lot better than it was a couple of weeks ago. And now that I've been redeployed to the intensive care unit, I'm able to see for myself the realities of, of what this disease is doing and how many people it's actually affecting. And what are those realities that you're seeing? Well, South London seems to be particularly badly affected. Um, we, we're seeing a, a huge number of cases. Every single bed in our intensive care unit is filled. Most of the patients are on ventilators. They all, where I'm working at the moment, in, in one particular part of the unit, um, it, everyone has COVID. And we're not just talking about intensive care being relegated to just one department. We are talking about overspill into other areas of the hospital, including theatres. And we've also got a new section of our hospital opening up just to take these patients. So we are dealing with very large numbers, but we have got a lot more staff to help. So that includes myself. Um, I've been redeployed. I volunteer to help and move from the maternity area. So all these extra pairs of hands are really helping. And I have to say that staff morale is amazing at the moment. Every morning when I go in, I get asked about, you know, how I'm doing. Everyone gets asked about, you know, whether there's any issues or problems they want addressing. Everyone is really tuning in into each other's psychologies and trying to make sure that we're all try that we're all staying sane and on top of it all as much as we can. So it's 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 amazing. And I absolutely I I have a newfound respect for the amount of work that goes in the intensive care unit. It is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, the, the way that families are communicated with on a very regular basis, kept up to date with things and the personal stories behind each person. That's what's really touched my heart. And I've already had many, many emotional moments there. So I, I know there'll be a lot more to come. I bet you have. Um, from a medical perspective, briefly, if you will, uh, how important is language right now? Much like with cancer patients, there's a feeling we shouldn't be talking about fighting a battle or losing a battle with COVID-19 because it implies people have a choice in whether they survive this or not, which can be very, very hard, can't it, for families who have lost loved ones? Yes, I mean, this is the first healthcare crisis we're facing in a generation where we're using social media. So it kind of almost seems natural that people are going to inflame this language and add some melodrama to it. And in, in some ways, it does sort of feel like a battle because this is about as kin to a war zone as, as people have ever experienced. In some ways, we are really battling to gain control of this virus and to stop it from spreading and to help to keep patients alive. And also the fear that goes with, you know, the language of war is very real here. But what I disagree with in, in, in using some of this language is the fact that it almost seems to suggest that the burden of healing lies with the patient and that's absolutely not true because you know there, there's patients are helpless when they're affected by this mm. disease and that's why mm. we're here to help and to use intensive support if we need to to try and help them to heal. Dr Larissa Corder as ever thank you very much for your thoughts thank you.